Hey, this is Josh Thompson. Thanks again for listening. If this content is encouraging to you, it would mean the world to us if you would rate the podcast. Your rating will help more people find the show. You can also journey with us by subscribing to our channel. And if you share it on social media, please feel free to tag me and our guests. We appreciate when you share this podcast with those you know. We are believing it will continue to stoke the fire in people again. Special thank you to Landmark Coffee Roasters, a sponsor for this podcast. If you haven't tasted their coffee, you got to go check it out. They got the best beans in Southern California. Go to Landmark Roasters. Com. Type in promo code STOKEHOUSE to get 20% off. That's LandmarkRoasters.com. Special thank you to Ola Canvas, a sponsor for this podcast. They build super durable, high-quality clothing out of Costa Mesa, California. Ola Canvas is a small business of creators making some of my favorite clothing and products on the planet because they take time to build each piece and make it with high-quality material. Check them out at OlaCanvas.com. That's O-L-A Canvas.com. Welcome to the Stokehouse. Time to get fired up. yee Ladies and gentlemen, Katie Thompson in the Stoke House. Hey, babe. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You are my wife of 13 years. You've given me three amazing children. You're an awesome mom and wife. And uh, you're my favorite guest to ever come on the Stoke House. Have you said that to anyone else? No, of course not. Oh, okay. Wow. Thank you. No, you are the you are the favorite guest. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. This is real. Um, we, it's been a little while since we've uh, come on the show together, so we thought it'd be fun to do it again. Yeah. And a lot of people liked it. A lot of people said they tuned in and listened to this one. I think it's because they don't want to hear me. They'd rather hear from my wife. <laughs> well, it's fun to come in and sit down like this because we talk all the time. Yeah. It's fun to sit across the table and have people listen in. And it's funny on the way here. I was like, it's weird that I'm nervous right now to go talk to my husband. <laughs> <laughs> like I haven't had butterflies to talk to you in probably like a long time. 13 so years. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Like, yeah, I'm very nervous right now. Like yeah. we're on a first date or something. All right. I like first dates. <laughs> Even though we've done this before. So. Um, so today we want to talk about kind of the relationships that happen through all of the stages of life, different types of relationships that happen through the stages of life. Um, because those relationships change, I guess, you know, you go from, um, people knowing each other as friends to dating, uh, the relationship changes and then getting married and having, uh, kids and all of kind of the stages of relationships. And, um, yeah, we, there's a lot of question marks around this stuff today and especially for young people. And so we thought it'd be fun to dive in and uh, talk through a lot of this. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of this has been on my heart and we talk about these things at home constantly. Like where is everyone at in our generation and the right. next generation to come and what is marriage and family looking like for people? And we talk about all these things, and I think it's just like it's on my heart that um, this next generation really wants, um, they really want to dive into family and marriage and all that. And I think sometimes they just don't know how or they don't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. And um, I was listening to the Jordan Peterson, Greg Laurie mm -hmm. podcast on the way here, yeah. and he said that this generation, Gen Z, reminds him the most of his time when they were going through um, the Jesus revolution. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really encouraging to churches because we've gone through kind of a season where it's like, we're it's things aren't going as well. People um, don't really want to show up to church. They'd rather do other things. And um, how amazing would it be that if there's another revolution of people who want to get back to church, yes. get married, have a family and pursue the godly things of life and pursue those things that, um, that God's given us as a, as a present, as a prize and a thing, um, that is actually brings you a ton of joy and a ton mm. of happiness because it's not, it's not material, it's spiritual. And, um, yeah, just thinking about that, I, I just really feel like, um, Josh Sisko even says it too, like this generation is looking for mothers and mm. fathers, mm. spiritual mothers and fathers. Mm. And, um, if we can even be that to, I don't know, a hundred people or so, um, I think it's, it's time to speak up and help people. I think a lot of people from my generation maybe wish the church was a little more authentic and, um, told people what marriage looked like and family. And, and it's, it's actually a lot more, um, 
it's not as perfect as maybe it's been portrayed in the past. Um, it's a lot um, more complicated. And but <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that uh, people just want to know the truth. They just want to know and they want to be encouraged that it's going to be OK and that um, to dive right in and go for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's almost like. The church, and maybe a lot of people were nervous to go on record and just declare what the purpose, what the direction of life is supposed to look like, what, you know, dating and marriage is supposed to look like, what family and kids is supposed to look like. Like everybody's nervous just to outright say that. And I've even been saying it pretty directly to the guys within this last year. Like I've just, I don't know, I guess I was nervous to offend people, but it's like, listen, you were made, you were designed uh, to n- not be alone. Mm-hmm. It's not good for man to be alone. You were made to be married. Mm-hmm. Uh, 95, 99% of you guys are made to be married. There's a very small percentage that is not supposed to be married. You're made to uh, be married and you're made to have a family, to raise kids in the in the name of the Lord Jesus and to have grandkids and to um, be fruitful and multiply and to... Work the ground, provide for your family, protect your family, pastor your family, I tell the men. And uh, you were made to do this. You were designed to do this. And young men, I mean, even 12, 13, 14 year olds need to hear this stuff clearly. And then the teenager needs to hear this clearly. And then the the young 20 something needs to hear it clearly so that they know what to step into and they know what to expect. And for some reason, there has been a silence, it seems like in... uh, I don't know, for, for quite a while, you know, where, yeah, people are scrounging online looking for like how to's mm-hmm. of, of family and how to's of dating and how to's of life uh, and marriage. And so, um, yeah, we thought we'd, we'd get after it. Yeah. And I like that you brought up these things start when you're young, that, that image of like, you want to get married, you know, you do, you can, if you're a young believer, you can start preparing very young and you can get counseling from someone older than you and Mm -hmm. discipleship. And that's always a a great path. And maybe some people didn't grow up in the church, Mm -hmm. but you can still be discipled and um, led in the correct way. But um, let's talk about, um, I feel like everyone always wants to know like how we met. And I feel like we've told the story a hundred times. Yeah. But I think it's interesting because we've listened to some like podcasts about relationships and stuff. And one of the most interesting thing to me when you're looking for a mate is that you should be curious about them, Mm. right? Mm -hmm. You should be genuinely curious and interested in them. Definitely. And so on the way here, I was like, gosh, what was, what was it that Josh, like, why, why why did he find me interesting? Oh, you (laughs) No, Why'd you find me interesting? Oh, you curious? Um, I think, well, for you, for me, you had the strength and the um, m- women are looking for a strong man. They want someone to lead. So for me, you had the strength. You were definitely like alpha male. Um, you are the leader in a group, which is, ex- it's extremely attractive to women right away. But I think on top of that, um, I think I found you a little bit, maybe like other girls didn't see it, but I think I, f- I saw the deeper layers of Josh, like- mm. I saw that you're a little bit like complicated inside and like mm. maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's like a bad thing to want to fix or like help. Sure. But I saw I always said that when I saw you, I was like, gosh, this guy needs rest. Like he looks so tired. Mm. And maybe everyone else is like, oh, Josh is doing all these things. He's I'm like, this guy needs like he needs a nap. He needs to relax. <laughs> he needs to like sit down with like a nice drink. And like I felt so maybe that was like the Lord putting in me like a heart of like uh, wanting to take care of you or nurture you and um, be that for you. But um, I think I found you curious because, and and also I'm very introverted and yeah. not super good at like talking or in groups and things. And I'm like, this guy can like make his way around a crowd. He could like f- go around a whole room that's busy in a party. I'm like, I've always, it was like, it was um, magnetic to me because I've always wanted that, mm. that, that side. And so I think I saw something in you I didn't have mm. that I knew that if I was around you that I would get that somehow mm. by um just example or something. I don't know. I was very curious in those areas. And I think I really, really appreciated 
that you took care of me on our first date because mm. I thought also I was like, well, he's really like alpha male. He's super like sweet and like everyone loves him. I'm like, but watch, he's probably not going to be that nice or whatever. Mm. But then you took care of me on our date. Like you picked, picked me up. You like put the bikes in the car and you paid for everything. And then I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So he's like a gentleman too. Mm. So I think those things for me made me super into it. And I don't know. You're super cute. And wow, I was thanks, attracted babe. to you. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, curiosity is a big deal. Yeah. And I, um, I think I'm, I mean, I think curiosity is still to this day. Like I'm always interested in what you are thinking about something or what you have to say. And uh, you are, you're, Katie is a cat. She's a, um, Shh, don't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah, don't tell anybody. Um, so you, you know, you're not just going to get the attention of the cat. That's not how it works. You try to get the attention to just run away from you. And, uh, repelling. and it might, it might even, <laughs> no. Um, but, um, and, but, <clears throat> but that's the thing. It's, there's a deep well on the inside. And so, and I, I think that I picked up very quickly that you weren't, um, that there was something going on between, uh, those two ears, uh, that you were a smart girl, that you're educated, that you, you know, you're way smarter than me. And so I was like, wow, like she actually has the facts and like, I don't know. I, I think, um, yeah, again, not to demean, you know, or anything else, but really, I, I don't know. I picked up on that very quickly. He had a lot to say about things. He started pointing out trees and the types of trees and the types of leaves. And I'm just like, okay. Um, uh, she's thinking on another level about things that I'm not even close to thinking about, you know, uh, Katie always says, you know, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, it's funny. No, what's going on between your mind, you know, in, in your mind is, oh. you know, what is this molecule and, and the leaf on the, you know, what does it do and how does it accomplish and how does it play into the universe and this, uh, and then what's going on inside of Josh's head, wish you would step out from that ledge, my friend. <laughs> no, you're... <laughs> <laughs> you're just enjoying the moment. That's you're the present. Meme. I'm just That's like difference. Is just having a good time. You're there. I'm Eden's me. You already saw. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was one. I mean, the second, the other side of you is that you're the clown of your family. So you're actually like really funny. Like when you when you get into your element, all of a sudden, like you just can take over and like almost stand up comedian type. Just start like just letting them fly. And then it's just, it's just so funny, you know, and, and we're having a lot of fun. And then, I mean, the fact that you're like, uh, I could sell everything and live in a shack on the beach and I'd be happy. I'm like, what, who is this girl? Uh, of course, um, you went to, you were going to Bible college too, which is pretty crazy that, uh, you'd made that decision and we're trying to dig in and figure that out. And, um, I remember, you know, I mean, you come from a good family, you know, that was very attractive. Um, I wanted to know and understand that world because it was so very distant from me. Um, when I found out that you guys had been serving in the church since you were like little kids, you'd serve in the church mm -hmm. your whole life. I'm like, what? So there, there were all of these elements that definitely, um, you know, yeah, caused me to say, man, you know, this is somebody that I should really spend time with. And I think that's, that's it. I remember back to macaroni grill uh we went big we we were we were flying macaroni grill and uh we were sitting down and we had a meal and i remember i was i was like levitating you know i was floating you know because i was i don't know i think i was just so excited that i had found a girl with depth who loved god who i was attracted to uh she's not just a little cute she's mm -hmm. uh very cute and uh i you know i, I found my beautiful babe you know mm -hmm. and like and that, that I could, um, I don't know. I had been, I had been looking for a long time. I'd been waiting. It was my dream to like, you know, just get married, have a family. That's all I want. Just want a stable family. I just mm -hmm. want a warm home. Um, and you worked in anthropology and you had all the style in the world. So that, that didn't hurt either, you know? Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's hard in this day and age, you know, to find, um, the person, that you want to marry. And, uh, you said the word curiosity, how mm -hmm. important that is, because I think you do want to remain curious the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. um, being curious about the depths of that person. Because the person never stops growing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's very, um, I don't know why people have this idea, like the, they'll never change. You're going to marry them. You'll never change them. That's partially true that they're sure. kind of bent a certain way, right. but I, 
they, people grow and their minds grow and their experience grows and their um, humility grows if you have the Lord first yeah. and in your life. But um, that makes me, it, it makes me wonder if, what do people do today? Because for us, we had the church, we had a common place. That's where we met each other. Yeah. That's where we met each other. And we had a smaller pool of people. It felt like a giant pool, but I think one of the hard things today is that the pool is the world or your state or your city. Sure. Right. And it feels or like, an app. Yeah. <clears throat> or an app. It feel, I mean, like sometimes people have trouble even online shopping because there's so many options for something that's sure. like decision f fatigue. But how can young people today, I feel like, know, like what are the things that, we need to look forward. That's the most important things that aren't as important so that we can move forward and not feel like, like stuck. Because I think a lot of young people I talk to, I think feel a little stuck because I think they, on one part, I think the men aren't really showing up as men. Mm. And so girls don't want to mother someone. Mm. And so I think they feel like when they are dating, like the guy isn't showing up as the guy, right. like a huge turn on, uh, a turn on for me. And the thing that was like, I want to marry this guy is that you you showed up as the man and you took care of me. And that was, that was huge for me. And so what, what's, um, what are girls supposed to do with that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and what you mean is I took care of you is like, um, I don't, you know, from small things like opening the door or, um, like you said, I loaded the bikes, you know, like the woman isn't the one loading the bikes in the back of the truck, you know? <laughs> Um, so you're physically strong, able, you know, to do all the labor. Um, I think that you pointed out the fact that I paid for everything, you know, which I didn't have a lot of money at the time, mm -hmm. but I still was like, this is just what guys do is you pay for everything. Like, this is it, which is it, which is a big deal in the women world. Right. Yeah. Um, for a guy just to show up and pay for everything and take care of everything. <clears throat> and of course it's like, you know, well, you want to split the check, you know, but that's not, that's not what a man who's going to take care of you for the rest of your life is going to say or do. And so, um, yeah, those, I mean, those are the things off the top of the head that I'm, um, I'm thinking that you're, you're pointing out. Yeah. And I, I'm just saying, what, what do you think? Is there a better way to meet someone today? Oh, yeah. Than, that? then, I mean, I'm not against the apps because Josh technically messaged me on Facebook hey. to make the connection. So I'm not, I'm not putting down Slip the apps. Into those DMs. I'm Let's not putting go. down the current way of meeting people because sure. if that's the way of meeting people, then that's the way. Yeah. But I've seen some negative things of of the apps, like girls sometimes using dates just to get out and sure. go to dinner, and right. that's taking advantage of men, and that's disrespectful. Right. Um, so I feel bad for the men sometimes. Cause I think that if that's happened to you a few times where you're like scammed almost by a woman sure. where she, you take her out to dinner right. and it's just like immediately, I don't feel a connection. And right. then you're like, okay, I literally have no money. How can I keep going on dates to find a girl? Um, is there a way the church can help or is there a way, how can you pair the apps with something Sure. to make sure that maybe you're on the right course to finding someone who could potentially, potentially yeah. marry. I mean, that's the thing is like social media opens you up to the whole world and how do you vet the whole world to find, you know, your person and how do you not exhaust your resources and your time and your efforts and your heart? Um, you know, it's very difficult. That's why I think that the small community is the most important thing. Like, I don't think you can get away from that. Like, I, I don't think that, <clears throat> um, unless you're really good with social media and you know how to vet people really well. And like, you're a master of that stuff online. Like, I don't think that you can navigate it very well. There's gotta be a way to know people's personality. There's gotta be a way to get beyond the, the profile picture and the description and all of this stuff, because, you know, even, even one of the books uh, that we were listening to and working through in the podcast on dating and on relationships, they were talking about compatibility not being the most important thing mm. um that that if you can line up the 10 things that you're looking for in a person they all line up that does not mean that you're more likely to stay together mm. it's actually the opposite is that not being compatible enables people to be together longer so um again it's it's an interesting statistic because it goes against 
uh, the the wisdom that we're giving that that people are giving the world with all of these, you know, um, profile matching and you know connecting online. And so I really do think that it comes down to the person. And I do think that it comes down to small community eventually. Like mm-hmm. you have got to figure out how to get face to face with this person. And um, um, I, I think some very foundational pieces that will just eliminate people very quickly <laughs> is just say, hey, where do you go to church? Mm-hmm. How long have you been going there? Do you serve in your church? Mm-hmm. Done. Yeah. Right? I love that. Um. I mean, you you can vet people so fast. I mean, maybe that is the core question. Do you serve in your church? Yeah, that's a great question. Like that kind of just cuts off like a lot of people. Yeah. And that reveals the heart of a person. It's interesting you say serve because on the way here, I was thinking like, what are some of the elements when you're looking for someone that is is important? Right. And serving it. That is a precursor to a great marriage. Hello. Serving. Right. I mean, this is what you're yeah. committing to for the rest of your life. We're just going to serve each other. Yeah. Wow. So if you aren't serving when you're single right. Some, somewhere, right. then um, that's a red flag. Right, and right. And that's a good red flag to have. There's other ones that are like, yeah, not a big deal, but. But yeah, you know, I think it's a great way to cut through the, oh yeah, I believe in God. Oh yeah, I'm a Christian. And it's like, we'll define that, you know, mm-hmm. and like, but the way you can cut through that is do you serve at your church? Mm-hmm. Um and and I think that's that might be step one, a great way to to cut through the fog and and try to find somebody. But I, you've got to find a way into a community, mm-hmm. and um, church is probably the best way to do that. Yes. Um, and sadly, you know, church pools can be very small as well. And so, do a tour. Uh, go to go to all the singles ministries of all the churches. Go to the the young people uh, ministries and you can visit and, and hang you out. Know, I feel like and if you do that, ch- you, don't worry, you're going to get like eyeballed by the leadership. Like what's this dude doing showing up here? Like, who do you think you are? So if you eyeball a cute girl and then it's a great church, you better plan on hanging out there for a little while or, yeah. or uh, double dipping in your church. You, you better be going to your church faithfully and then going over there on Thursday nights or Friday nights or whatever to go and uh, get to know that girl. But um because that happens all the time, and that's probably a good thing. And it is difficult when your when your pool is small. We came from a church of fifteen thousand people. Mm-hmm. A college ministry grew to like five six hundred people. So it's pretty nice when there's lots of people around to meet. Um, but yeah, you know, I I, I think um, there might be these types of people just standing around everywhere. Mm-hmm. They've just never been approached. You just don't know it because people don't approach people in public anymore. No, they don't. They, nobody knows how to act anymore in That's public. Scary. It's, well, I don't know. I think there is something to in-person meeting yeah. that is you can't pick up on a picture and you can't pick up on text. When you're in someone's presence, there's something there. It's the unspoken. It's, it's yeah. the, the unseen. It's the spiritual. It's the biology or whatever. Sure. And I think that's what... Um, that's why it's important to like create that as best as you can. And I think church was, it's just a safe place because then you find friends and you say you pair up with someone, then your friends can help you see if that, like that's a good person for you or not. But yeah, um, yeah that was kind of, that was the best place. And thankfully we were in a church and church so is many the best pe- place. So many people got married during that season. It was, it was um, kind of special. Or if you're on a college campus, you know, you can find the college Bible studies or something. Or, you know, I mean, there's, if you're in high school, um, don't date unless you're ready to get married. Yes. Amen. (laughs) Um, And uh, because that's the thing, you know, dating in high school and then dragging the relationship on for three, four, five years. It's just like, what are you doing? You're not even ready to get married. Um, It's better just to get ready to get married, prepare to get married, Mm -hmm. and then start looking uh, for a spouse. Then go looking for a spouse. And I think, too, even like on the word of curiosity, be find things that are curious about yourself. Like before you go meet someone like in high school, early college years, develop like your interests, the things that you're interested in. Stop thinking about like, when am I going to finally find? Just develop your interests, Mm -hmm. then move on. Mm -hmm. Like I... I laughed because one of the things I thought you liked about me huh. that you say is that I could shoot a gun. <laughs> hey, that's right. One of our but first dates was shooting guns. <laughs> I came from an all girl family. We didn't shoot guns. Yeah. You know what I did yeah. is that one day I saw the Christmas story and I go, I've never had a BB gun. I think I bought myself a BB gun at Walmart right. Right when right I was in gun. 
20 years old. Yeah, Red Rider. It's the most random thing. I was we like, still I, have it. I'm going to go buy myself a BB gun because I never had one. My mom never let me get one. It wasn't safe. And so I, I like identified with the Christmas story kid, like you'll shoot your eye out kid. Mm -hmm. And I got the BB gun and I was like, look, I showed my friend, look, I got a BB gun. Isn't this cool? And uh -huh. like, I, I like cocked it. And then I went to shoot randomly somewhere uh -huh. and I shot a bird. Uh -huh. And you killed it. <laughs> and I felt horrible. Yeah. And I didn't mean to shoot the bird. Right. But uh, that was... Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That you was where... I, we have the Red Rider BB gun. Yeah. And that... Me going to Walmart and just deciding I want to find one led to me being able to somewhat shoot a gun, which led Josh to find me interesting, me going and studying biology because I love biology and plants and animals yeah. and going into college and studying classes about the plants. Sure. I, I told Josh everything I knew about the plants because yeah. that's what I studied. Right. And then he found me curious. So, and then me working at anthropology, I love clothes. I love style and that leads into the rest of your life. So don't ever be afraid of pursuing the things you're going to do yes, because eventually the person will come along and um, you'll know, and you just need to dive in and go for it. Yeah. Yeah. What are the top three things? Tell me three things that are, are just, just go for it after you know, these things be true, or maybe there's four things. Um, well, number one, you got to be able to shoot again. <laughs> no, <laughs> it really was amazing. You got to tell this story. So we're standing out. I can't remember. We ended up going shoot. I think we went to breakfast together. It was one yeah. of the first time we kind of hung out. Some friends had put some breakfast together and you were there. We were hanging out and there were, I was like, you want to go shoot guns? And uh, we got it all together and all the guys went out and Katie showed up and, uh, and uh, I even have a picture of you holding, I think the revolver that you were shooting and uh, I still have that revolver. It's great. It's a 22. It's a little, it's a nine shot, I think, revolver, but it spins. Psst. I mean, it's really cool. And uh, it has a hammer on it. You got to pull it back. And it's a, and, and it has like no kick on it. Like it's almost feels like a toy gun. You know, it's, it's the smallest round you can buy next to a pellet gun. And so it's like, you know, that's the sound I make when it goes off. And Katie like lines it up with two hands. He's like this. So this little gun's like, and like hits the bottle, like blows it up. I'm like, are you kidding me? She can shoot a gun. Okay. That's it. You know? And that was it. I All knew. Right. No, the four things, uh, I love what Mr. J, uh, told us. And, um, these are great, uh, principles. You said the four F's hmm. things that you should look for. Um, that are very important in a person. I think these are general categories, but um, because these are the four things people get divorced over, he said, the four Fs. You have to have the same faith. So be equally yoked the same. So you want to be equally yoked. You want to have the same faith. Um, or you're not going to know where to take the kids to church or to the mosque uh, on the weekend. And so you better decide early that you have the same faith. You're going the same direction spiritually. Um, or there's going to be problems. You're going to fight about that. Number two is F is friends. So you need to, um, you need to be best friends. And I think curiosity plays into that. You really, marriage is simply a friendship. You're just being friends with this person for the rest of your life. So pick your friend and get on with it. And so uh, make sure that your best friend, you just want to talk to him, you know, until you're old and you can talk all night. You have a great time talking and spend time together. Number three is finance, finance, money, debt, all of that stuff. People fight about this stuff. So it's important to figure that, that out up front. Um, because if you don't get the money figured out to some degree, it doesn't need to be perfect. You can be broke and still get married and work it out. Just get a budget together, make sure the debt's figured out, make sure all that stuff is figured out. And uh, where you're going financially, especially your brothers, you know, get it figured out. And then uh, number four is family. Um, you need to know their family. And because uh, you're not just marrying a person, you're marrying into a family and that family's not going away. Mm -hmm. And so um, you're going to have to put up with that family for the rest of your life. And so, um, you know, make sure you're good with that. And those are the four, those are the four things, general things um, that I think when you look into a person, you can help figure that out. Now, if you're going to want to get more specific regarding Christianity and a person, I would list off very quickly. Um, 
they, you just, you need to be attracted to them. Um, you need to, um, they need to be a Christian, love the Lord, serve in the church. Um, they need to have, be going, I guess, in the same like direction as you in life. Like you're planning on going kind of the same direction and not like, oh, I'm going to go live in, you know, Italy for five years. You know, it's just like, probably shouldn't date that person right now, you know? Unless you want to go to Italy. Unless you want to go to Italy. Unless you're like, I was going to Italy yeah. too, actually, then for it's five years. <laughs> Bang, you know, here we go. Um, probably should be going the same direction. Um, and then I think um, finally, you know, I think it's, it is friendship. You know, it's the same interests. Mm -hmm. It's the same. Um, it's a lot of the same interests or wanting to do the same things together because that's going to be your friend for the rest of your life. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's as simple as that. Like, I don't think it's very complicated. Yeah. Um, I think we've overcomplicated it. And I think maybe the greatest deterrent is talking. Yeah. Just talking to people. I think people are just nervous to talk to each other because we're so stuck on our phones. And um, yeah. Uh, social media and all that stuff has taken over socialization. And so now we have a really hard time talking and communicating. And I don't know, how, how do you, I mean. And I, I think we know too much as well. We're too aware. We know too much. There's too many options out there. Why settle with this one if there's a better option out yeah. there for me? Yeah, that's and true. I think that's a really false way to think of things. That's it. Because like you said, it's not compatibility because me and you couldn't be more opposite in the way we function. Totally. And that's actually really good because yeah. God- Because I don't want to marry me. Yeah, you don't want to marry yourself. No. Trust me, <laughs> you don't. And you won't realize that till you see yourself as you truly are, which takes a long time and takes um, a lifetime of experience to even realize who you are. But you, you will marry someone- different than you because that's the way I think God God built it that way. It's the iron sharpens iron. It's <clears throat> it's that Josh has something I don't have because I need to learn that. I have something Josh doesn't have because he wants Josh to learn that from me and um and grow in that way. And that's the beauty of becoming one flesh is that you you spend this lifetime together constantly learning from each other. And it just forms this bond and this friendship that is unlike any other relationship on the earth. And the, the best thing you do is that you find the person who fits that criteria, those four things, and you just go into it. And then you believe that God's going to carry you through. And you believe that, um, that you're going to be faithful to this person. You, I think that we need to take the covenant seriously as well. Like mm. marriage is a covenant. It's a commitment. It is actually a, it's a document <laughs> you sign and you're committed to this person for yes. life. It's, it's a, it's a sacred thing. It's not It's not a light like, oh, yeah, we're getting married. Like, if you think of it in a light way, then your mind is already doomed to give up. Right. If you think of it as a covenant, like, this is the person I'm entering into my covenant relationship with. I'm going to bond with this person over the rest of my life. Then you're in for the long haul because that means you're going to go through everything with yeah. them. Yeah. You're going to be absolutely loyal and you're going to be committed to them. And that's what everyone's looking for is they want to be committed. And it takes a long time of being married to actually see the beauty of what that is because there's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of hard years it is the most beautiful thing and it's the best relationship you can have on this earth Yes, because it's God given. Yep. It's every, you know, you're Good. born into a family, you choose your spouse. Yep. It's, it's a special gift yes. and to not be afraid of it either. It's right. not scary. If we can do it, <laughs> anyone can. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, so two things. Um, what do you think are keeping people from, um, dating or entering into relationships, entering into marriage? What do you think are keeping people from that? Number one. Then number two, how do you think men and women can prepare? Um, and I, I could speak to the men, you could mm -hmm. speak to what the women need to be doing, but, um, um, yeah. What do you think is first like deterring people from relationships? Well, I think one is, um, idealization of, I almost feel like family's like a fantasy today. Mm. Like mm. on Instagram, the ballerina farm is like a fantasy to people. And they don't realize like those people probably worked really hard for their marriage. And they have right. a lot of kids and they sure. work really hard. And that could be why they're in that place in their marriage because they've worked through a lot of difficult times and totally. um, they've just kind of leaned in on each other and like um, 
it's not a fantasy. It's actually like you marry someone and you you pour into that person and you build a family and yeah. you love that person truly. Mm-hmm. And you seek the Lord together. It's not a fantasy. It's actually, it's a gift from God. Right. So I think sometimes it almost feels like unreachable to a lot of people because mm. most people grew up in broken homes and divorce. Mm. And I think they're just trying to do the best they can, but a lot of people don't, they, they don't come to the marriage able to give the thing the other person needs. They don't come with a servant's heart. Mm. And so then there's brokenness in the next marriage and then they feel like they can never fix this. Let's give up. I think, yeah, there's like this idea of marriage and it seems perfect, but then the reality is everyone sees that it's hard and they don't understand why it's so hard. So I think the church needs to step in and say, marriage is difficult and it there's the picture of it that you see on Instagram or or even in some churches where it looks like it's this perfect relationship. But to get there, you had to go through this journey of yes. difficult hardships yep. and arguments and disagreements to even get to that place where you can get along and be friends. Yes. So I think that is like the whole thing is like, why would I get married when I saw my parents argue all the time? I'd rather be single than put my kids through that. Sure. I'd rather um, divorce than have them be in this home where we're arguing all the time. Sure. So there's that whole thing. And then <clears throat> if I can speak to the, the women. Well, yeah, let's, let me, let me elaborate yeah, on that. So, um, yeah, what people don't realize is that that couple that you're looking at, that's been married 20, 30 years, who has a great marriage, has a great family, um, they they didn't start off that way, as Katie's saying. They were just like you. They were exactly the same as you. They're 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 wondering. They they don't know anything. They in, they just they they step into marriage, and don't worry. In twenty thirty years, you're going to be like them. I remember one of the brothers said that. Um, he had said to me that he had walked up to one of the older men and said, "Man, I wish I had a wife like yours." You know, and he's like, she didn't show up like this. It's been 25, 30 years to, for her to yeah. get to this point. And it's the same thing with the man, you know, he didn't show up like that. This mm-hmm. this development process. And, uh, you know, you don't show up to the gym and day, you know, two, all of a sudden you're in shit. Like this is in shape. This is a long journey. And so it's, um, but the journey's worth it and it's wonderful. And it's the best thing that'll ever happen to a person mm-hmm. just as God has designed them to be married and to have kids and have grandkids, uh, to subdue the earth, to have dominion over it, to be fruitful and multiply, uh, to enjoy, um, what mm-hmm. God has given to us. And so, um, I, I, the other things I think deterring people are, um, I do think that the the apps and the social media, the comparison. Mm. So um, what happens is because you can date so many people quickly, you almost start stacking up a list of qualities. I like that and that person, that and that person, that and that person. You build this perfect person. And now no person that you ever date in the future can actually meet that list. Mm-hmm. And so you immediately say, oh, they're not that, they're not yeah. that, they're not that. And so I think that's one of the most dangerous things you can do. That's why getting married young is so good mm. because you don't have anything yeah. to reference. Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh my gosh, she's hot. Oh, she likes me. Oh, she made me pancakes. I'm marrying her. You know, like, in the, you know, she loves God, you know, like, let's get married. Let's, let's have four kids and get on with it. And then, and then you grow, mm-hmm. you know, but, but if you've been dating people for 20 years, 25 years, and you just never get married, you, you can always find something wrong. And this, the longer you wait, the harder it gets. Mm-hmm. And that's why I tell people, um, find somebody who loves God that you really love and like and get on with it. Stop with the nitpicking and stop dragging your feet with all of the excuses because the longer you wait, the harder it gets. And uh, of course it's God's timing, but um, man, I see an entire generation of men dragging their feet. They got all the excuses. Um, one major one also that I wanted to point out as a deterrent is, uh, is I think porn mm. is um, basically men are getting their fulfillment of women digitally. Mm-hmm. Thus, they don't need to pursue a woman now. Mm-hmm. But if you just took it all away right now, like every single bit of porn off the, off the earth right now, uh, men would be burning inside, like just trying to find an ankle, you know, it's just like, Oh my gosh, she showed an ankle, you know, uh, they would be working harder, 
focus, laser focused on the prize because they want to achieve that woman mm -hmm. and the drive to achieve the woman has been taken away because of the sexualization of women online and it has destroyed uh, the young generation of men. And it's also been really unhealthy for women as well because to compete with that means mm. you have to show more, you That's have right. to reveal more, you have to be more sexual to even get a guy's attention. Right. Which we all know is a cheap form of love. Right. Like that's not that off the bat is if a guy's just after your the how you look, right. that's you don't want that kind of guy. It's only gonna last yeah, you know, a few years because once they change and get older, you're gonna want to trade them in for a new model. Mm -hmm. Right. Totally. That's yes. unfortunately, that's just the reality is that um, it even says in the Bible that charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So the beauty is going to fade. The things that make you feel, you know, when you're young and 20, it's the best, it's the best years. And I see a 20 year old, right. I'm like, that's just the best. Right. Like you're cute, you feel pretty. And, but you're, you can be crushed so easily by a guy right. and you, you just want a, approval from people. You just want people to find you attractive and beautiful. You want you want to get a great guy. You want to get a strong guy. So you want to put yourself out there. There's nothing wrong with being beautiful and being um, wanting to be attractive in your 20s, but just know that fades. And it's great because like I was cute for you. I didn't. <laughs> she was cute. I dressed up. I made myself cute. She dressed up. Um, I put myself out there, but there's a certain level of doing that, being cute and tasteful. And then there's another level where it's like, guys are going to see that and they're going to want one thing from you. And then that's right. it. They're done. Right. And, and knowing that different differentiation from lust versus love with men and knowing how to dress for that. I, I think that's so important because I think men see when women like dress in an appropriate way. And I don't want to like put women down because I sure. think that's. Horrible. I think women should feel like confident and they should wear the things they want to wear, yeah. but within like reason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, because you should be, you should be able to feel confident in the things you wear and um, you should be able to dress and feel cute and do the thing you want to do. But yeah. if you dress a certain way, it sends a signal to men, whether you, whether you like it or not, or whether you believe it sure. or not, it's That's sending right. a signal to men. And that signal means I'm, ready now and i'm i'm like it's not it's not the signal you want to send and um so yeah dress cute be adorable classy be, be classy <laughs> be classy and um and you know what guys will find you very attractive and, and classy and stylish find, you'll find the guy who wants you can to dress to the you. nines you can do all the things if you want to but just remember that yeah you you know you 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 attract you you ultimately are attracting what you're presenting, mm -hmm. and so you know who do you want to attract? What do you want to attract? You're luring in, you set the lure to get a specific fish. Yeah, and so you know, I'm just saying that in the context too, though of like yeah, of, competition of, of, of porn just, and yeah, sexualization it, of women and the, the whole, whole thing. thing isn't fair. Can we all just commit as a church to like? Can we all just put that stuff away? Can, yeah. we, can we challenge ourselves to, can we call the men to challenge themselves? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, totally. It, it is, it's a, it's, it's just really sad what's happened to our culture. And it's, it's like a virus that's just like taken over everything. It just infected everything. And yeah, so women feel like that's the only way to compete to get the guy, but you just have to know the guy that you're going to get is not looking to probably ultimately marry you, probably not going to be a godly guy and probably not going to be a great dad to your kids. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to lure that kind of guy. Yeah. Um, but you can still dress up and be classy and stylish, feel sexy and attractive. All those things are very important for a woman. She should be able to do that all at the same time, attracting the right guy, which mm -hmm. is very difficult to do. Obviously that's why we're talking about it, but it is possible. You did it. Did a great job, man. Great job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are some of the deterrents, some of the things I think stopping people from pursuing relationships. And then how do you think I can talk to like how a man can prepare uh, to find a woman and maybe you could speak to how a woman can prepare to find a man. What's all the things that she needs to do? Um, you know, I want to point something out. Aaron sent me a, can I say that Aaron? 
sent me that sent me that video the other day. It was so good. But this guy was going off on like how this girl, you know, he's like, well, you know, on a, on a scale of one to ten, you know, like well, how do you rate yourself, you know? And she's like, I'm like average, you know. And like average, okay, you know, like that's great, you know. He's like, what about with your makeup off, you know? And she's like, well, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm probably average, you know, makeup, okay. And so he's like, what kind of guy you want? And she like lists off this like guy. And you're like, well, what is he out of a, like one to 10? She's like, he's probably like an eight or nine. He's like, but you said you were average. You're a five. You're like a four with no makeup. He just starts going after her. Oh, no, he just tells her, babe. He's like, come on, be on it. You know, you're, you're a four or five. All right. And you're trying to get an eight or a nine. And this, this is something I got to point out. This is so true. For some reason, guys rate themselves and they're like, well, I'm this kind of guy. And then they want, they want a number above that. Everyone's doing that. Yeah. What are you, what are you, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? I mean, I just got to say it clear. Cause it's like, if you're a five, expect a five, just be honest with yourself, you know, go after fives. Don't go after sevens. Don't go after eights. It's never going to happen. If you get a six, you just scored right. Aaron, you just scored. If you got a, if you're a five and you get a six, you just scored. Anyways, I thought, this but isn't so. that worrying about attraction only? <laughs> No, no, we we're talking we're about, we're, we're talking about, no, we're talking about uh, their person. We're yeah. talking about money, how, you know, how much they make. We're talking about their career path. Yes. The way that they look, he was, he was talking about all these things. Yeah. And uh, it's just so funny. Those rate yourself things are like the worst, especially if you're insecure, but it's just, a, it's, it's just a, if no, you're, funny. if you're a two go after twos. Okay. Just please. That's all right. So if, mean. No, come on, get it. Let's go. I'm sick of these guys. <laughs> I'm would speaking call to the men. A two. I'm speaking to the men. Okay, brothers. All right, you're a three and a half. All right, that's all you get from me. All right. You know what? I think everyone's a ten. Okay. Everyone gets a trophy. Kate, Katie's <laughs> Katie's rooting for you. Katie's rooting for you. Uh, anyways, um, I sound like a jerk, uh, no, you don't. Pastor Josh. You're, like, you're saying. I'm just saying it what straight. What you're saying in a funny way is you're trying in a somewhat funny way, but also kind of cruel, is you're trying to say. Be realistic about where you're at and the person you're seeking for. Because yes. if if you are someone who's like super, I don't know, like successful or something, and um, you're gonna want to find someone who meets the, your your level, and sure. it, unfortunately, that's just like the way it is. Yep. And you, for longevity and security, you want to make sure that person is much into you as you are into them. And it starts with attraction, but it also ends with like friendship and the connection yeah. in that way. So make sure you have a person that is in that realm. Yeah. So, you know, so men, when you are preparing, you're preparing yourself to go out into the world and to find your mate what is she looking for? What does she ultimately want? Um, I, maybe you can correct me on these things, but these are the things that I think that men, number one, I mean, in all men is, of course, you need to be loving God with your whole heart. Mm -hmm. This is a slam dunk. Now, a lot of guys in the church will say that, check, they've got it down. But for some reason, they neglect all these other things. But I'm a godly guy. Yeah. But you got all these other things completely out of whack. Number two, provision. You make money. You work hard. This is absolutely probably the next most attractive thing for a woman. And maybe you could explain why, babe. I don't think I could explain why exactly. Am I hitting that on the nail? Yeah. The goal for a man is to provide and protect provide and protect. So why is provision so important? Why, why, why do men need to get this, this one in order? I think because the only way I can know is from, from experience of my own, I worked when you worked, when we first moved, I've always worked before I had kids and everything was fine. We were kind of just like, we're doing our own thing. As soon as babies came into the picture, yeah, I saw immediately why you had to be the provider because you, your heart as a mother, you want to be with the babies. Yeah. You need to be with the babies. So yeah. maybe you need to take a time. Maybe it doesn't mean you don't work forever. Sure. But you, there's a time where you really need someone to be go out and get, get, get it done. Get the berries. Get the kill, you, kill the deer. Kill the deer. I've got this at home. I'll take care. Can you just go, please help me and make sure things are taken care of so I can nurture these babies. So you can relax. So you can relax. So the mom's not stressed out. 
about whether or not our kids are going to eat. Exactly. Mom's stressed out. Kids are stressed out. So there's a time, there's a very special time when you have your babies that you just want to make sure the mom's taken care of. She's not stressed out. She's not like anxious about things because that bleeds into the children. And so I think it's important, the provision and security and like, um, I think a, a woman feels more I don't know, beautiful or like when she's taking care of someone's taking care of her. I think, mm-hmm. I don't think women really want to be a guy's mom. And I think unfortunately mm. a lot of women have to be the, like their mother and tell them oh, you're not, you know, you, you need to do this. You need to do that. Nobody wants to be the mom. You don't want to be the nagging wife. Right. You right. want, you want to be taken care of. You want, um, you want someone to provide for you and protect you. It's it's a basic yeah. need. Now, now, you brothers listening, I don't know if you picked up on this. My wife, I've been married 13 years. She has said the word taken care of yeah. me like probably 10, maybe 15 times already in the podcast. So it was one of the first things she said when we first went on our first date, you took care of me. Mm-hmm. And then she literally just said it a bunch more times. Um And what I'm trying to say is this is extremely important. The woman wants to know that she's going to be taken care of Mm -hmm. and, uh, financial financially is, is very important up front. It, I think it's because it just says a lot about a person. Are they disciplined? Can they show up on time? Do they know, you know, how to gather berries and how Mm -hmm. to kill the deer and how to bring them home successfully? Um, it says a lot about them, you know, are, are they driven? Are they going to make things happen? And so that's why getting this first brick in place is so crucial. And this is why guys who are not very attractive, but have made, are very successful, made lots mm-hmm. of money and the world seem to be able to attract women very quickly yeah. is because those women want to be taken care of. Women in general want to be taken care of. They really do. That is a, a deep desire down that they don't have to carry the whole burden themselves. Mm-hmm. They want someone else to help carry or carry that burden for them. And I think men love doing that. They do love doing that. They I, love being the hero. I think men at their core want to take care. They want to slay the dragon. They do. I see it in my sons. They yep. want to take care, but you crush that man and right. you make him feel small and he'll, he's not going to, he's not going to perform. Gonna do it. Yeah. 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 If you crush him, make him feel small, you can't do it. You're terrible. You never do anything. Yeah. Rah, rah, rah. You start going after like that. You're cutting him down. Um, you can even do it in your, right. in the boys, you know, it's very, it's, we have, we want to encourage them. You can slay the dragon. You will slay the dragon. Yeah. You, you have your sword, you are capable, go after it, get it done. Yeah. Um, and that is, that is very crucial. Um, if a woman is cheerleading her man on, mm-hmm. uh, he will conquer like 10 times, yeah. uh, what he thinks he's capable of because he has the support of his wife. Yeah. He becomes like Superman, superhuman. Um, the second thing in taking care of is not only provision, but protection. Mm. And, um, you know, protection, r- regardless of your frame, regardless of your size, um, you can get in the gym, you can, mm-hmm. uh, you can, you want to be capable. You, she wants to feel protected by, uh, whether it be a bear coming at the family, she better not be standing in front of the bear trying to stop it. You better be standing in front of that bear. Um, or somebody's trying to break into the home. She's not the one getting out of bed and going and running to the door. It's you. Um, protection. But you did like me shooting as a backup. That's true. That's true. I mean, she can flank the right. Just kidding. If some, if there's a sound, I'm like, babe, go get that. She can flank the right or the left, like no problem. And I mean, I'll go down the center. She's flanking the right. And we like got this. Uh, no. Yeah. But yeah. Um, you know, you, you want to feel secure as a man as well. And so it's, you know, it's, it's, um, you, you want, you want to carry that authority for sure. Everywhere you go, she wants to feel protected. She wants the kids to feel protected. Mm -hmm. Um, these things are important. You should be a lion. And Uh, provide it, the kids provided for, like they have everything they need and yeah, it's, you're the guard dog of the family. It's so important. And I've said this to you so many times. I'm like, it's so weird. Like I thought I wanted to be like this powerful, strong woman. Like I had these visions, like living in New York and in a penthouse. Like feminist style. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I don't know if women really want to be in control. Like at the end of the day, I think women are super strong and very capable. Totally. But we're, we are the weaker vessel only in the sense of like emotional and physical. Like we, we're really strong and then we're not. Right. 
And then we need somebody to carry us right. for that time. And then we can get back out there. But women are, it doesn't mean women aren't strong. It just means that they look, their strength is different. That's right. And I think for women to prepare is to, I think, lean into like what it looks like to be a woman. Mm. And maybe that wasn't like shown to you or, or you're not sure, like find someone who can disciple you or who can who can be a mother to you to like teach you how to raise. It's really important before you step into marriage to know how to like, like nurture your husband and be a good wife and then to be good with kids. So like I was a nanny, I babysat a lot. Um, whatever job you do, you're going to end up doing it as a mom. So mm -hmm. it's great practice. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm working all day and I'm like, I just view the day now as opening checklist and closing checklist. Like right. at my work, it's like, okay, let's open the day. Let's, pull the blinds up. Let's make breakfast. Let's do that. Closing checklist. Let's get the kids to bed. Let's tuck them in. Let's brush their teeth. Let's clean up the dishes. So now it's like, whatever you do before you have kids, you can implement that in your married and in life. So don't be shy about getting to work and getting out there because those things are great life skills for later. Um, I think learning, I think learning how like to love a man, there's so many resources out there now to like, to know, um, I love these two books. I always talk about them with Josh. It's called The Male and the Female Brain yep. by Luann Brizendine. Right. And Dr. Dobson was actually the one who said these books like mm. way long ago wow. when he preached at Harvest. But these books, I bring them up all the time. It, each one is showing you that like the female brain is doused with the female hormones in pregnancy and the male brain is doused with male hormones during pregnancy. And it leads to different types and and the way that men and women operate and if you know nothing i i'm a, i come from a girl like a girl family three girls then read the male brain because then you get insight into how men act mm. um i even one time i didn't understand like what men talked about and i like made myself watch college football mm -hmm. just to like have a point of conversation to figure out what was going on I was like all right well i don't know what that is but okay that first down and right. then this and <laughs> um so i don't know find things to be curious about like with guys but don't be fake right. they can pick up on that but um play into their interests like somewhat but don't also don't chase a guy mm. ever don't chase a guy that's not your role you should be available and you can like being available is just <laughs> yeah, how do you be available you just <laughs> stand just near there. stand near you're just around maybe just, you're a little annoying i don't know <laughs> you're just around yeah just be around hang out with your friends don't don't act like you need anything yeah i think that just play the cat yeah play uh, if you are a cat maybe you're a golden retriever type but <laughs> <laughs> um, just be available. Don't, don't ever chase a guy that they should be chasing you. That's yeah. their job. Yeah. But they you can make, to, but you said it, you can make yourself available. Make yourself available. You can, you can just stand within distance. <laughs> yeah. You can make eyes every once in a while, yeah. but not too much. I say a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What are, what are other things that women can do? Like, like I'm talking about providing and protecting, like what are the things, what do you think a woman needs to be like, how is their preparation uh, to attract a man? Like, how does she prepare to attract a man? Uh, well, typical women, I feel like that sounds very complicated, like how to prepare, right, right? Right. Like, how do you, like for men, it feels like so straightforward, but for women, I'm like, well, I don't know. I feel like for every woman, it's probably different until they get to a place where they feel like I'm ready. Actually, I feel like so many girls are like ready to get married. I think they're waiting for the guy. Yeah, you're right. You're right. They're probably already prepared and they're ready to go, but you can, uh, if, you know, in order to get prepared, right, women can, I mean, obviously loving God and getting your heart right with the Lord is yes. important, number well, one. Yes. Yeah, see, I love, you're feeding me all the good. Um, thank you for saving me. The most important thing is loving, is your, if your Jesus should be, or the Lord should be number one relationship in your life. If he's, if God is your savior, your husband won't have to be your savior. Mm -hmm. So if you look to God as your savior and you're seeking him, then that sets you up for a life of success because then you're not going to be upset when your husband isn't saving you every time mm -hmm. you're going through something. You need to have God at the first of your of your life. And um, so, yeah, get deep in your spiritual walk, just as deep as you can go. Do something that gets you out of yourself, out of your comfort zone, that forces you to get deep in your spiritual walk because that's going to save your marriage and your um, 
and your family later. And then I think it doesn't hurt. I know it's really old school, but I wish I knew how to cook. And I I was a nanny and I took care of kids, but I wish I learned to cook. That's I would it. take cooking classes because men right. love two things and one of them two is th- eating. One of them's eating. <laughs> <laughs> and they love food. And I'm learning to cook. I finally I was like, babe, 13 years. I mama. finally made you uh handmade meatballs and, and sauce. And I'm like, bomb. 13 years. It took It was that amazing. Long. And he loved it. And he's yeah, handmade pastas. Yeah. I mean the garlic. And the and the sourdough and the meatballs and the onions and the oh, it's amazing. I love it. So if I could do it all over, I did make you cookies. I was you good at, at like. You used to make me food all the time. I know, but it wasn't that good. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> no, the so cookies were good, but everything else, I don't know. But um, learning to cook and all that stuff, it's it's kind of like old school deal. and all that. But it's it's Not a huge old school. deal. It's new school. It's, yeah. It doesn't men go away. It. Men have loved it for thousands of years. They're going to love it for another thousand years. I think men love to see the sign of a nurturing. Just like That's it. I want a good dad and I want a good husband. You want a good mother and a good wife. And women are just natural nurturers. Yeah. They love to take care of things and nurture people. And um, so find where, where your gifting is in that. I, every woman's a little bit different. My gifting is naturally keeping the house clean and organized. Mm-hmm. And so I had to learn to cook. Mm-hmm. I think reverse engineering um, things really gives you the answer to things. And um, I, w- I was just thinking that through like um, a, and maybe we could reverse engineer a couple things like, um, like what it, what are turnoffs? You know, what is a complete turnoff? What's the ick? <laughs> well, you can, what, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's the new, that's the new slang day. That's the new stuff. No, that, the, yeah. that could be already over. Oh, it's already over. Like See, everything goes old. so fast. Okay. I'm already old. I, I think no one, nobody is allowed to have icks anymore because okay. everyone has too many lists of what doesn't. That's true. That's I'm, true. I feel like everyone is so picky that they're well, not choosing anyone. I would say that. So I would, I was reverse engineering like biggest turnoffs. Well, that, that, I mean, like you were even pointing that out. Like, yes, if, if a woman just dresses up a little bit and like, you know, go get, go get her makeup done, you know, puts on a nice outfit, you know, feels cute, you know, does, does all those things to feel cute. I think if she's working on herself to feel attractive, she will then attract, uh, she'll attract that man. She'll she'll attract men for sure. And then second, I think I I was even thinking that I couldn't believe you even started saying it, but you were like, um, I kind of wish I would have taken cooking classes. I would have prepared to cook. But what I was saying is like, women one way into the heart of a man is through food. And like, if you like make him something or bring him something, that's a gesture, you know, just like, I made you some cookies. It's like, what? You eat that cookie and you're like, are you kidding me? Um, But, but if she's able to cook or if she's, she's basically displaying that she is going to take care of children really well. I think reverse engineering uh, things like big turnoffs are like, um, I mean, I don't know, women who want to um, dominate and uh, usurp authority and basically overpower and demean that like that kind of woman who comes around and like guys just don't like that. They don't like it at all um, because men want to lead and they, they want to be supported and encouraged. And so um, I think that girl that's being like really promoted in our society is like one of the biggest turnoffs. Like she could be extremely attractive as soon as she opens her mouth. It's just like, ugh. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it doesn't mean she's not powerful. It doesn't mean she's not strong. It doesn't mean she's not all of those things, but she knows, uh, she knows how to be, to come alongside her husband, support and encourage and help lead the family mm-hmm. and not, uh, usurp authority. I think that's, yeah, I guess I'm reverse engineering that. Well, that brings me to, I wanted to read the two verses about marriage. Cause I think that these are are the things that each person is looking for in a marriage. Huh. And then I don't know if you want to talk about, yeah, the, the negative side of that are people who well, don't. Yeah. What's, what's the, what's, what is the, uh, what are, um, yeah. What are turnoffs, I guess, for women, like for men, I mean, uh, to men. <clears throat> well, it's that they want a guy to be strong, but if he's too strong, he could like hurt her hmm. or be mean to the children. Yeah. And so women sometimes are afraid of men who come off strong mm. and are too aggressive. And then I think women are afraid when guys are a little too passive because they worry that they'll have to carry it. Mm. And so um, I think 
there's two, it's either you're too aggressive and I'm scared of you and I don't want to be scared of you. Right. Or you're too passive and I'm afraid I'm going to have to carry this thing and be the leader and I don't want to be the leader. Yeah. I want you to lead. And that was a Jordan Peterson quote or something you told yeah. me. He said, um, the beauty and the beast is that picture of that. Oh. Is that women are looking for like, it's like the beast character. It's like, he's like this rough man and that but she like somehow like calms him down or something yeah, and like but he's, he becomes soft. Right. He's sweet on the inside. He's kind. Yeah. 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 That is, uh, and that is a very hard balance, but the, the, the ick or the turnoff is when he's only beast. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or he's only kind. He's just a noodle arm, only kind yeah, beta. It's okay. <laughs> can I say that? I'm saying it. Well, you can't leave it in today. Dave. <laughs> we're leaving it in is mark zuckerberg a data a beta though well <laughs> he's not uh, that's today's alphas no no are, yeah he no he's different. been mark uh zuckerberg he's uh, an alpha now he has turned into an alpha yeah but he wasn't before he was a noodle arm uh you know who had made a lot of money done really well but uh, he's like jujitsu master now i mean he is in shape this dude's jacked and he's like yeah, he's turning into an alpha. Like he's starting to hold himself. He probably asked his AI, like, how do I become a real man? And it started like telling him all the 10 things he needs to do. And he started doing them. And it, it's kind of working. I mean, yeah. it's pretty crazy. So you can't transform. That's what it means. Well, that's what I think. Don't think in terms too. like, I think we're overthinking it. I think you marry someone you're attracted to. Maybe they don't have all the things you're looking for. You're I right. wasn't. Cook. You're right. I couldn't cook. Okay. Right. If that's a turn off to that's you. That's true. That's true. Then you're like, well, this one can't cook, but right. the other girl I met last week can. So that's true. I'm going to, maybe I'll start pursuing her, but then you pursue her and you're that's like, well, this girl day. doesn't know tree leaves. <laughs> and I probably, let's be honest. I'm, I probably wasn't very kind. I was like more beast. You might've been more beast. <laughs> and I've had to work on my kindness mm -hmm. over the years. Well, that's, so the thing I'm thinking there is, don't you think in marriage, you and me both have those, the things that were a little bit red flags. So when we're dating. Sure. A little bit of red flag for me, things you do, a little bit of red flag, sure. things I do. Sure. I still have those things. You still sure. have those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've grown in them and they're not as often and right. we're not as immature. That's right. So the truth is, is that I don't, I think we get hung up on these icks like, Someone sw that started when someone was swimming in a pool, like a guy. <laughs> was like doggy I don't know. I don't know. He's doggy I think, paddling. I think the first one was like the guy was just like doggy paddling in the water. But don't don't hang up on that. You know, he could be. The, what if there's like a doggy paddle? He's a, dog, he's a doggy paddle champion. What if he's the best? Why would you? Why'd you get mad at him over that? Because the guys. Well, that's what you need. You, men need to be around men so the guys can make fun of them yes. and rub off all the rough yes. edges. And everybody, that's that's the beauty of being with the guys is we all just like rip on each other and have fun. There's there's no real intention to hurt each yeah. other. That's not fun. But it's like when you're just you're just having fun, playful banter, and you get after each other and 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 you start growing uh, to be like each other. You you encourage each other. And that's that is a huge lesson for women. Let the Put your let your husband be around dudes who can criticize him and yeah. kind of rough him up, and then you be the one to say all the good things to yeah. him. Don't reverse that, and you be the one criticizing him, right. and then he runs to his friends to hear the good things about himself. Right. Reverse it. Like go be with the guys. Let them like tell you everything that's weird about you or whatever, and then you come home and I'll be your cheerleader. I'll tell you yeah. all the things that are great and you're, oh, you're going to do it, babe. It's great. Be, con you know, be the cheerleader. I love that because that is the difference between a good marriage or a marriage. You just kind of want to be in separate rooms and not see each other. Well, I'm even in, in, in the same thing with the brothers is like the life goal of marriage is to serve your wife and serve your kids to mm -hmm. lay down your life as Christ did for his church. And I think of Mr. J, of course, you know, Mr. J uh, he's like, I wouldn't consider Mr. J a beast of a man. Like mm -hmm. he's not like, you know, six, six, you know, and like, you know, 250 pounds of muscle, like this monster beast, but he is a Colonel in the air force. He, mm -hmm. he, he is, um, I don't know. He holds authority. You know, he is a protector. He's a provider. He's, and he's one of the kindest men I've ever yeah. met. And, um, and that those are qualities that you really want to give to your wife. And I think that women are ultimately looking for. Did I ever tell you, <clears throat> I saw Mr. J 
he came to anthropology what one time remember i told you that and no, I uh remember well he was looking for a dress for darcy for no way. some event and wow. he was the sweetest like husband i yeah. he literally stood out to wow. a lot of husbands some husbands would come with their wives yeah. and they're like when is this over he didn't right? know it was you no he knew it was oh, me he knew it was you and I helped get some dresses or whatever. And yeah. she found like a beautiful dress. He uh, made her feel very pretty. And he like held things for her. I think he held her purse or something. Yeah. He's very sweet to her. And then at the end, I was like, oh, if you sign up for the club card, you can get a percentage off. And he's like very old school. He's like, thank you so much. <laughs> he was like so happy to get a little discount off yeah. the dress. Yeah, yeah. It's like a real, you know, it was a really right. big purchase for sure. them. And Anthropology is a big expensive. deal. Yeah. And um, he was just such a gentleman. And I think... Women, if guys know one thing, women want that. It doesn't, honestly, they don't really. I know you're talking about like looks and all this. Sure. Like, guys. They just want a, they want a guy who's going to make them feel special. Yes. That's it. Deep down, that's all they want. Special. They really, it doesn't hurt if you're cute. It doesn't hurt. It's great. Right. But you want to feel like someone loves you and wants to take care of you and sees you for who you are and loves you regardless and just, I don't know, is there for you. That's it. That is it. Um, brothers take notes. That's a, that's the gold right there. They want to feel special. And if you make them feel special, you've won their heart. Mm -hmm. um, so we've talked a lot about dating and preparing for marriage. Um, maybe we should talk. You want to spend a little bit of time talking about entering into marriage. What do you think? Yeah. Um, I think I just had, I just thought we could kind of go a little bit deeper on the first Peter three passage. Sure. Um, do you want me to read it since I have it right here? Yeah, we can do that. I'm, and uh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you know, once you find your person and you've been dating for a little while, really like, I mean, depending on your age really, but it's like, if you're young, young, you know, maybe you want to date for like a year or, or a little bit more, get engaged, get married. But I'm telling you, if you're older, if you're in your thirties, you know, if you're in your forties, like, it's like, you know, you're six, seven, eight, nine months in and you already know, like, just get married already. What are you waiting for? You know? It's time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but entering into marriage is the covenant in the big step, the big commitment with God first and with your spouse. Mm -hmm. And um, Katie's going to read a passage for us. Is First Peter 3. First Peter 3 is, um, first it's for the wives. And you read this every time at marriages and I get to rehear it every time you do a wedding. Mm. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. When they see your respectful and pure conduct, do not let your adorning be eternal, external, the braiding of hair or the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is in God's sight a very pre is very precious." For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands. 1 Peter 3, 7. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a great passage kind of wrapping up um, marriage as a whole. Like you get, I mean, you get a lot of download in that. A lot of breakdown, a lot of specifics. Yeah, wives be subject to your own husband. So not all men, but to your own husband. Um, and what does this mean to be subject to your own husband? It means that you, you are submit to your, your husband. Yeah, res your respect, husband. honor respect. him, right? Yeah. And... Um, and again, this is, it's controversial still in this day and age for some reason. It's maybe especially in this day and age, but um, it's it's becoming more and more clear, I think, with the traditional marriage, like more and more young people are taking this on and realizing, just as you said, like, I think women want to lead and then they start leading and they're like, I kind of want my husband to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, men, are, and then when you encourage your husband to lead, he actually feels like Superman. Yeah. Like he was made to do that. And this is the way God designed it. And uh, the Bible is very clear about this, that he made the man first and he made the woman. And the helper was uh, the, the, the helper was the wife made uh, to accompany Adam. And, um, and Adam is called to lead his home as Christ leads the church. Um, it's very, very clear in scripture. 
And, um, but this doesn't mean that um, they are to demean or to dominate or to overpower. Um, that's definitely not it. It's, it's the picture of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. The way that he leads his church and he leads with authority. Uh, and he, he definitely leads but the church gladly submits to him and gladly follows him, gladly respects him, gladly honors him because of his attributes, because of his character. Um, it's easy to follow Jesus um, when you look at his attributes next to any man on the planet. Um, and so men are to imitate Christ and to try and to uh, lead their family in this way. But it's really interesting that it says, wives submit to your own husbands. Uh so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wife um, when they see your respect and pure conduct. Yeah, I think something I, I've i been like thinking about and like listening to podcasts about is just like how men and women are different mm -hmm. and how men need certain things. And I think this, I think this whole like generation or it, it's like the girl power, the girl boss generation yeah. has really put men in this like demeaned state right. by women. Like right. a lot of women have taken control and have become leader in their family. Right. And what it happens to the men is that they're, they're demasculated and then they can't lead. And so um, I just want, I think a few things like men, they, their testosterone in their brain, they crave <laughs> leading and doing these things. And I think it's important as women that we are strong, but our strength is in, in being a, being like reserved, like reserving that. The best thing that shows me that in real life is that it's, it's me learning the long way around, right? Like mm -hmm. every time I want to be like, oh, he's not doing it right. He needs to be told like he's not. And I'm, I just wait and I let you just do it. And I encourage you you actually have better results and you will, you'll finish the task way better if I just say nothing and then I only encourage you. Mm. If I say anything negative, it, I watch it literally ruin your whole so like thought process. A little fire starts in my mind. I'm like, yeah. oh no, the, the forest is burning down. <laughs> what am I going to do? Somebody put the fire out. Like it is, every, it is, it is weird how it works. Every time you do a project or something, if I, like I've over 13 years, I've trained to just at my, my mind, I go, just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> like just, just don't say you. anything, like stop, stop like having to bring up everything wrong with that. Um, I just say nothing. And then I try to encourage you and you actually like, you'll, you'll work harder and faster. Cause you, you're always, I didn't realize this, how much power I have as a woman, mm -hmm. like in your psyche, in your mind, to yeah. like sway you and, and yeah. disrupt you. The puppet master. It's so weird. Like <laughs> you marry this man, he's in control, he's the leader, but then you're like, oh, everything I do is really affecting him and yeah. really upsetting him. And once you realize that, then I think you feel like I need to like watch what I'm saying because it's it's disrupting my husband and then it's not allowing him to like, to be the person he, the man he needs to be. And I need to step into that submissive role, which is very hard to do because you subdue yourself. Right. And that's a lot of self-control to subdue yourself. Right. To be like, well, I know the right way. And to not say that, that's really difficult. Right. Right. So, and sometimes you don't know the right way. That's <laughs> and true. then you learn, you're like, oh, I didn't know. So good thing I didn't say anything because right. he knew what he was doing all along. You know, it's like, it's the, it's all the reels. Like the wife always knows where the parking spot is. Like in the, there's a spot over there and the husband was already going for it, but the woman just has to say it. Like yeah. she can't hold it back. She's like, yeah. there's one right there. Yeah. It's like, just let the like, like old man <laughs> find his spot and like go calmly over there. Yeah. The comedian that I can do it all by myself, like a big boy. Yeah. <laughs> I can do it all by myself. <laughs> it's taken me a long time to to learn to just let it's really hard to submit and let someone lead. It's so hard. Yeah. But it frees our relationship of all the turmoil and there's actually peace if I let you lead. Well, and some of the results are are definitely there when you start to encourage and yeah, if I'm in a problem and you start to encourage, it's amazing. I get a boost of dopamine, you know, I get a boost of adrenaline. I'm like, I can do this, you know, like you're doing such a great job. Wow. I really love you did that. And Katie's a details person. She see everything, every little detail. So, um, 
you know, um, it's, it's, it's almost like the woman is an extension of, um, the entire atmosphere of the family. Um, but the nervous system, Mm -hmm. um, like almost regulates the entire room. That's why they're those jokes, you know, mama ain't happy. Nobody's happy. And it's like, uh, if mama gets mad, then the whole house is going to feel that. Mm-hmm. And if, if mom is being uh, negative and tearing down, the whole house is going to feel that. And it's really wild, man. I mean, it's, it's like, I, how much it, it can affect me because when I'm in the zone and doing something, and if you do give positive feedback, it literally changes my whole day. Yeah. But if there's negative feedback, then it like literally can ruin my whole day and I'll obsess over that thought. And I'll, I'll have that cloud like hanging over my head and I've got it now go to work and deal with all the things when I have this, like this negative atmosphere. And, um, but I mean, it's amazing that you can articulate that and that you can, um, even identify that. And that, um, I mean, you, you've worked so hard, you know, to be encouraging and even change attitude and do all that stuff, which has brought, uh, me ability, you know, to, to get out there and get after it and to complete tasks and, live life and try to be a good dad and be a good husband. Um, but it's not easy. Like you said, it's a process, you know, that happens over time, but the text is true that you can win over your husband without a word Mm -hmm. or with the right word, with just good conduct, pure heart. Um, and that the outward adornment does help no doubt. Uh, when she puts on something cute, Mm -hmm. you know, it says, you know, I love you. I'm for you. Um, but, but to, to subdue um, the things that could tear down the husband or family um, is what Peter is instructing here. Mm-hmm. And uh, to keep the family attack and keep it encouraged, and you can actually win him over through your actions. Yeah, and even that saying, if mom ain't happy, ain't no one happy, that's sad. <laughs> like, yeah. what a, what a, like, what a house to come into. And I, I think I had, like, the Lord revealed that to me in our marriage is like, Oh wow, I'm I'm the one responsible for the house Josh comes home for and the and the the temperature of the room and the the bombarding of negativity on top of you the second you come in. I'm responsible for that and I'm not doing a good job at like taking care on my end to make sure that am I happy? Am I am I providing a home that feels warm to come home to? Is that is this a place where Josh wants to hang out? Or is this a place where he wants to go retreat and go somewhere else because it's so contentious and negative? Like women sometimes don't realize we sabotage ourselves and um, we need men to help us reveal that to ourselves so that we know that we we need to change that and we need to ask the Lord to change our hearts so that we can love our families so that our husbands can come home to a place that feels warm and our and our kids are happy and Mm -hmm. there's not stress because um not that women are causing it because it's like uh, there's two sides to a story but like if you just want to like serve your husband and just like be kind to your family and just test it out for a week have the home be a calm place my it is not that way at our house it was always stressful and then I started like the Lord revealed to me to try to make it calm when Josh came home and like it changed a lot of our nighttime and our dinners and um, that's just a game changer. Just change the mood, the environment. You as a woman are very good at that, changing the environment. And you can, you can do that. You can, you're capable of it and just test that out for a week and see if your husband doesn't just like turn around and want to serve you and love you because the environment is a place where he wants to be and he wants to hang out. We've talked a lot about, um, wives and, um, in the text and what Peter is exhorting and kind of, again, the demeanor, you know, of the wife and stepping in really from the beginning years until the later years, really, it, it only just continues to grow in advance, uh, mature. Um, you start off making a lot of mistakes in the beginning and you grow in experience and in wisdom and learn, um, how to win over your husband. And likewise, men, you grow in learning how to win over your wife. And Peter points out some gems here. Um, in verse seven, likewise, husbands live with your wife in an understanding way. Um, live with her, dwell with her in an understanding manner. Um, 
And this this is hitting at a deeper thing, you know, that um, you need to understand her. You need to understand your wife. And I think that men can oftentimes tell you exactly, repeat back to you exactly what their wife said, but they don't actually know what she means because they're not listening. They're not actually listening to her heart and what she's trying to say. He says, dwell with your wife in an understanding manner. It took me a long time to figure out because I mean, probably five, six years in our marriage, like I thought, you know, I was understanding you, but I wasn't like, there, there's this whole thing that broke out. I didn't realize that men and women speak two different languages. I didn't realize that uh, she was saying things between the lines. I didn't realize that my wife was trying to say something to me, but she couldn't actually say it on the surface. I had to listen deeper. And, you know, a, a funny example of that is, um, are you mad at me? You know, I don't know. I said, babe, are you mad at me? No. So on the surface, she's saying, no, guess she's not mad. No, doofus. Listen to tone, listen to her heart, listen to what she's trying to say. Clearly she's very upset, but the words are different. And this is women in general. Women speak differently than men. We speak two different languages. We got man language, we got woman language. And so what I had to realize is I need to start listening deeper and for longer to my wife, to what she's trying to say to me. And um, when I started listening with intent, to try to figure out what you're trying to say, and then even repeat back, is this what you're trying to say? Is this what you're trying to say? No, I'm not saying that. Yes, I am saying that. That is when I could start to get to the bottom of what you were trying to say to me. And what's scary about that is you can lose the friendship because you're talking past each other for years. Mm -hmm. You're listening past each other for years. Nobody's actually listening to the heart of each other. Dwell with your wife in an understanding manner. Um, and men, if you want to get to your wife's, if you want to get to your wife, become her best friend, become her girlfriend. And I make jokes about this, but it's great. You know, I mean, it's like, she wants you to be her girlfriend. You know, how does, uh, babe, how does this look on me? You know, she's trying her dress on. You don't say, all right. Looks good. You don't do that. That is a big mistake. You got to get in there like one of her girlfriends, like, oh, you look fabulous. So cute. Where'd you, you get that? Wow. I is love that how that looks on you. That makes you look so thin. You look so cute in that yeah. thing, babe. I love it. Oh, I like how that does that to your hair. I like how it does that to your shoulders. It looks really nice on you. I think it looks great. This is a great piece for you. Right? Mm-hmm. And it's like men don't naturally do this because men, you know, we walk up to each other. It's like, hey, dude, how's it going? Good. How are you? Good. We just had a 10 minute conversation right there. That was a big conversation. No, but men talk differently to each other and women talk differently to each other and women listen differently and men listen differently. And so men, you've got to get in there and start listening to your wife deeply. And I don't know how your wife talks. Um, I don't know how she listens, but you've got to figure that out. That is, that, that is the, the secret. That is, if any, every man could read his wife's mind, uh, he would reach Mount Everest, right? He would have conquered the highest mountain. Mm -hmm. But that is the lifelong journey is learning how to dwell with her in an understanding manner. And that is Mr. J, as he understands his wife deeply. They've been married 30, 40 years, and he knows how to handle her, and he knows how to talk to her, and he knows what she likes, and he knows how to make her feel special because he's listened deeply to her heart. Some of you brothers need to hear that. You need to go and listen deeply to your wife's heart, not with the game on, not with your phone going off, not with the distractions and the project and the money and the, all these other things you're working on, but really get in there and listen to her. And it may take like 10 or 20 attempts, you know, because maybe she's not ready to talk. I don't know. Something I, I like that you do that is a little bit cheating, but I think men, maybe men just have to do it this way is you always write notes in your, in your phone, things I like, yep. even though I think that's cheating. It's, it just might be the way men are. They're just maybe cause their brain just compartmentalizes things yeah. that you won't, if like, if you're shopping with your wife and she picks up a candle or she picks little things up and you're like, make a note of that. She likes this store. Yep. She likes 
this thing over here. Then you go surprise her on her birthday or something with something from that store. It doesn't even have to be a big thing, but the fact you remembered something she liked or you buy her a book about the subject she likes or you take her to a concert. She said she liked that yes. artist. Yes. That means- You're paying attention to details. Yes. It means you care. You're understanding her. Yeah. Yeah. It means you're still curious about her and you care about her. Yeah. Because a lot of times we get married and we get stuck in these patterns, yeah. work and life and kids, and then just everything takes over and stop you, listening. you just stop caring. You start listening, stop listening to each other. And then you don't feel loved or wanted. And then that's where it all goes downhill. Yeah. Or desired, you know? So when, yeah, when someone, when someone can pick up on the details of who you are and do something that displays that they've been paying attention, that, that connects with a human being deeply. Mm -hmm. And that is the secret to a woman's heart. You know, if you, if you want to really win her heart, if you can pin, if you can somehow get deeply in there, especially even you single brothers, if you can get in there and you can figure out the secret of her heart without her telling you, and then you mm -hmm. show up doing that thing, you've won her forever because you've discovered her. Mm -hmm. And that's all she wants is to be seen and heard and discovered and known and loved, loved for who she exactly is. And so... Yeah, a little quick tip, brothers. If um, if we're out or we're doing something and this and that, and Katie says something that she likes or wants to do, I, if my mind can register, I should do that. Then I immediately discipline and force myself in that moment. Like I don't, I'm not getting lazy about that. Like I'm going to say I'm doing that, and I write it down on my phone right now. So I literally force myself to write it down. So that I don't forget because I will forget because a week later, I'm like, what was that thing? What was that thing? I can't remember what it was because I can't. I just, I know myself. But dwelling with your wife in this way really unlocks so much. <clears throat> I think that it's very easy, brothers, after a long day of work to come home. And generally, your wife wants to talk to you a lot. And she wants to share all the things. Or late at night, she wants to talk to you about all the things. And, um, that is when men start to tune out and they're just like, uh, I just can't, I'm just like brain dead. So brother snap out of it. I don't know what you go get your Red Bull, uh, go get some candy. I don't know what it takes to get your mind alert and ready to go. But like, that's the time to lock in. Like you got to pull up your bootstraps, dude. You got to get to work because if you can connect with her emotionally and you can get in there and ask her questions about what she's curious about, what she's mm -hmm. excited about. You get into that conversation. She's really trying to solve a problem regarding one of the kids. She's really trying to solve a problem regarding something in the house or something that's going on in life. And you get in there and you really start to talk with her. Um, you you can you, you're you may not realize it, but you're making headway emotionally and in the friendship world mm -hmm. on another level. And that creates intimacy. That creates mm -hmm. deep intimacy, connection of the heart, connection of the mind. And, uh, and that's when your relationship, that's when you want to bless each other, you know, mm -hmm. because you're grateful, because you have a friend who really wants to listen to you. Um, but it's, it, it takes effort. It takes work. Um, I think too, in the conversation part, at first it can feel like, uh, robotic a bit if you force conversation like like at night we get like two hours to ourselves so we kind of like intentionally but we force the kids to go down to sleep between yeah. 7 30 and 8 yeah so we get that but at first it feels like robotic to like conversate because we're so tired and our minds are so full of other things yeah but i feel like over time we've like trained ourselves by having different like conversation starters and stuff to like, we really enjoy like talking about certain things now and we find, I don't know, or you're really good. <laughs> no, I do. No, I mean, that's the beauty of it is that when you actually get in there, you, you rediscover how much you like the person, Yeah, but that's it's a like, good point. you rediscover. Cause I think sometimes you get lost in marriage after so many years and you forgot the original person of who you fell in love with and who you were curious about. So it, that person's in there and they're still there. And what are, what do you think are good way? I think good ways to unlock that stuff is to, um, play a game together, go get a card game. Yeah. You know, that, that stuff is fun. Board game, um, watch a show together, read a book together. Mm -hmm. Um, if there's a concert or a show you want to go see, go do that. Yeah. A fun date night, you know, have your wife go get the dress, you know, go buy her the dress, go pick this, let her pick the restaurant she wants yeah. to go to. 
Go do the experience. Make it happen. Get the baby. Do the whole thing. You got to do it. The effort needs to be there. Yeah. Both sides. Both sides. Um, all of that stuff is is uh, our quick ways. Go for a walk. Quick ways. And you wouldn't believe the investment, the small investment into your marriage, even though you don't have much time, is the most important. It's so important. It pays. It, everyone in the family wins mm -hmm. when you invest in the relationship because mom and dad are the ones who are leading this thing in the family. And so if our relationship is suffering, then everyone else is going to feel that. So we need to make sure and prioritize our relationship so that we're strong for the kids and that we can, Yes. we want to be friends. <laughs> we want to get through uh, our having kids and be friends after this and have yeah. a fun time and, and enjoy ourselves and even know who each other are and yes. not lose ourselves in, in this season of life. And then wake up when everyone's 18 and be like, oh, who are you? It's easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the text says, dwell with your life in an understanding manner. Um, and it calls the woman the weaker vessel. This doesn't mean the lesser vessel. Vessels are two clay pots. It's hold water. A stronger vessel is something that's built more durable. The weaker vessel is something that's more fragile. And I like thinking of men as like a coffee thermos. You know, or a Yeti, you know, you can kind of bang that thing around a little bit, Yeti thermos. And um, the women is more like a wine glass, crystal, and um, they're to be handled with care. And um, and and that that is the dwell with your wife in an understanding manner is you're not going to talk to her the way you talk to the dudes. And you're not going to listen to her the way you talk to listen with the dudes. You're, you're going to... You're going to change tone. You're going to be selective with words. You're going. You watch women talk to each other. They're very, um, they're very delicate with their words and picking and choosing the right one to make sure they don't over offend or try to hurt each other's feelings. Um, men are are kind of bulldozers. They kind of just show up and just start saying stuff to each other, and they they can just wreck the whole place. And so, men, again, you you really want to uh, be selective with your tone and with your words. And speak to your wife gently, um, and understanding you don't want to break the wine glass. You really don't want to break her heart. But also, what something I had to learn is to speak up because I tend to be the more passive, like maybe scared to speak. And I had to learn how men talked. So for me, it was like I was talking at you oh. passively so many years. Mm. Well, I don't know if you should do that. I'd say that. Um, are you sure? Like all those things that is, it's so, I was so passive. I but just, you really wanted to do that. Oh yeah. I would never tell you exactly what I wanted. Something I learned. You're, you're nervous. I was going to get upset or something, right? Yeah. And something I learned recently is that men, if you want men to, to talk about something that's very like important, like say you want to talk if you're, if you're like, want to talk if our kids should do a sport or like, which direction should we go and get their input um, you have to, you can't just like talk at them passively or like in the middle of a project. So I was thinking about switching everything. Blah, 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 blah. Like men can't hear you if they're like doing something else. Mm -hmm. So you have to say, Hey babe, um, let me know when's a good time. I need to talk to you about something. Then in that moment, then you talk to them when they have your attention mm -hmm. <laughs> and then <laughs> they can hear you for so many years. I think I like talk at you or I don't know. You do listen to me though. If I come, you're working on something and I come just hang out with you. Yeah. I'll just start open conversating. But if you want to say something important and direct, um, don't be afraid to be direct to your husband and ask him specifically because he He's looking for that. I think he wants to know specifically what yeah. you want. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not a mind reader, the guys it's say. It's hard to be specific about what you want. Because when you were giving that example about men dwelling with their wives in an understanding manner, I was thinking kind of like a toxic form of that is like the man comes home and the woman's like all stressed out. And she's like, oh, everything's always a mess. And I can't believe this house. And like, and then the kids are, blah, 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 and she just rattles off. He just got off work. He's stressed out. She just added the stress. And then instead of him being in a calm state to help her, he's now reactive and just trying to fix up everything that's broken. Right. But if he can come home, she can have the family somewhat contained. It can't happen every day. Sometimes days are crazy. But sure. if she can somewhat contain and just say, hey, babe, can I talk to you later tonight about a few things? And then they get through dinner. And then later it's like, you know what? Can we just like work on the schedule? Because I think, you know, I need some help over here. And I instead of reacting... And just like, you never help around here and you're, I'm always doing all this. That sure. doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't right. help anyone. Men don't 
then don't learn from that. Don't respond to that. Just yeah. feel crushed inside. And you just want to fight back. Yeah. You want and to and s- become yeah. enemies. Yeah. And so, it, you know, it's, it's twofold, you know, it's, it's men need to be ready to kind of do three jobs. You know, it's like, you're going to work your job and then you're going to go home and tend to your wife and then you're going to go home and tend to your kids. And you just need to be ready for that. Like that is just part of being a man. That's mm-hmm. part of maturing. That's part of growing up and, um, not working and not, um, putting in the effort is just not acceptable. And uh, men need to rise to that occasion. At the same time, um, we're not going to be perfect in that, brothers, but we got to make that effort. And at uh, the same time, if the wife uh, can uh, make the effort to speak clearly and to tell the man what's going on instead of passively, you know, complaining or being upset about all the things that are happening and not telling him directly what she needs, because he's trying to navigate through all of that storm to figure out how he can help and he doesn't know. It's actually one of the greatest things you could ever say to your brothers to your wife is how can I help you? Mm. How can I help? What can I do? How can I help? Mm. And so, um, cause again, that's a calm tone. It's a nice, easy way. It's, it's, it, it demands clear response. Like there's a lot of great stuff in that phrase. So, um, that's good. When kids show up, well, I should add one thing at the end of that verse. It says that your wife is the co-heir with you. Mm. Um, she's co-heir. She's co-owner. And uh, you guys are doing this together. Um, men, you may be leading, but she uh, she definitely is helping you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you may wear the pants, but she puts them on for you. You may be the head, but she's the neck that turns the head. All the things. Um, so your co-heirs. Mm-hmm. So run together and listen to her with understanding, dwelling with her in an understanding manner. Lest your prayers be hindered. <laughs> That's scary. Rough. Well, it doesn't say that to the woman. No. It only says it to the man. Peter says, and if you want your prayer, you don't listen to your wife. God's not listening to you. Mm. I mean, it's crazy, man. So, you know, brothers, it's, um, it's a, it's a scary thing to dance with God and, uh, you step into the role of leadership. And so take on the responsibility. If you fail in this, just repent and Mm -hmm. get on with it. Mm -hmm. Turn to the Lord and start trying to walk as best you can. And, uh, he'll meet you where you're at. Kids, uh, change up marriage in a very different way. Yeah. Um, kids you can be having fun in marriage and kids have a way of um making things extra fun extra amazing extra awesome and extra difficult Mm -hmm. um kids are like gasoline on the fire huh i mean they will help to bring out every good thing in you and every bad thing in you, Mm -hmm. and they do it oh so well. These beautiful little things that show up, these little gifts, gifts um, that we get to discover and unpackage, a present given us to by God that we get to nurture and watch grow into a beautiful tree, produces much fruit. Mm -hmm. Um, But man, what a journey it is when uh, kids show up, huh? Yeah, you know the saying, Christians, you don't know what Christians are made of till they're put in the hot water, Mm -hmm. and it boils, and the um, like the tea bag, yeah. like all this stuff comes out. Well, that's what I explain when you're with your kids all day, you can't maintain this social norm of nicety. Mm. You can't, mm-hmm. it's impossible. Right. Your truth, the true self comes out. That's true. It's evil. Yeah. And then you, then, then you are like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm a horrible person. Like, cause this is this innocent little child who, walking around in fields full of daisies, everything's amazing. And then you as the parent come in and I don't know, obviously you have, as the parent have to discipline and do all the hard stuff, but it's just, it reveals so much about yourself. It's, yeah. it's incredible because marriage is one level of that. You, it reveals a lot about yourself and mm-hmm. you just, you come against that and you have to learn and grow. But kids like put you on that fast, in that fast lane of like, oh wow, I need to grow now. I need the Lord to show me now. I need wisdom now. I need patience now. Yes. I need all these things because I can't be a good parent to this these children if I don't grow in this way. Yes. So it forces you to growth because it's it's honestly the best thing. And that's why everyone says, have kids, have kids, because they're not telling you. <laughs> they're not telling you why. Yeah. They're, they are amazing, but it forces you to like change and grow. Yeah, you're going to grow as a person. And quickly. then it's incredible because then you actually meet that then you meet their needs and you actually love them at the level, like 
when you love them at that level that like God loves us, it's the, I feel like the closest images of eternity you, yeah. you can have. Yeah. Yeah. Kids are like, like fertilizer or something. It's like you pour that on the tree, like and you bear fruit, like so quick. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, it, it's, it's a perfect, it's a perfect problem. It's a perfect puzzle mm-hmm. that's been given to you that you have to solve because you love these kids so much. I mean, you'll give your whole life for them. You only known them for six months. They've been born, these little newborns, and you give your whole life for them. I mean, it's it's absolutely you love them so deeply, and then they cause so much chaos in your life, and um, but it's good. <laughs> and it disrupts all of your selfishness. It disrupts um, all all of the things that you're growing in sin, really, it just shows up and disrupts in your life and it forces you to grow and love God and love your spouse. I think, um, I think when I, when I, yeah, when I think of children entering in that stage of relationship between husband and wife and how to maintain that, um, I mean, I think maybe a couple things that stick out to me is number one, we are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus to our kids, right? We are ambassadors of God to them. We want them to know God. That's mm-hmm. number one. Number two, and so and so, we're trying to show them what it looks like to be a good human. We're trying to display that in character and in deed to them, teaching them to pray, teaching them to know God, teaching them to love God, teaching them to love each other, teaching them the word of God. And then second, um, you know, we are, uh, we're trying to help them become good citizens in society, we don't want them to be those, you know, terrible people uh, in town. And so, um, you have to discipline them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you have to. I like it. You have to be firm, but not mean mm-hmm. and authoritative um, and kind at the same time. It's very difficult to juggle, but that kind of is the balance. And consistent is so important. Consistent uh, with discipline. And um, making sure they know what is right and wrong. We're teaching them. We're leading them. And I think third, maybe the the one of my favorite is just helping them to have fun mm. and enjoy life. Just have fun. Let me show you what it looks like to have fun all the time. And sometimes I got to, doesn't matter even if I've had a long day. It's like sometimes, you know, I love it when one of the kids will just smile or like laugh in my face because it's just like, it just reminds me like, Dude, what am I all bummed about? Like, we got to have fun, you know? And I just start rounding the kids up, get them going, get them laughing and just having fun and wrestling, rolling around with them and having a good time or doing the thing that they want to do, you know, exploring and figuring out what they're excited about and what they want to do. And they get to show me and they're all excited. Like all that, you know, that that's that's what's really uh, fun about kids and really exciting and it can change you very quickly. Um but we have the opportunity, we have a blank canvas, we have the opportunity to build these humans in the direction of God, to be loving him, loving people. Not easy. Mm. But so rewarding. So rewarding. The best experience really is. I love uh, that Jesus was always saying, like, let the children come to me. Yeah. Um, doesn't he say, like, they're, if you don't have faith like a child? That's right. And I think that's true because like there's something about being a child and they just, they, they think (laughs) eternally because they don't know here Right there. It's like, they, they just think like, so I don't know, I can't explain it, but it's like, it, it teaches you that you, you have a lot of things in your heart that make you let that you're the one in the bad mood. Yeah. Like you're the one that is angry and right. and rude and losing your cool with your kids. And um, it's really, it's hard to speak about kids because we've, uh, we've only had kids for six years and I feel yeah. like we're in the learning stages, but. Yes, we are. Um, they're, they're just amazing. And I, I think that, I think our relationship has grown so much in six years because yeah. we had our kids and it was a struggle to have them to even have kids, but yeah. Um, it's really grown our relationship because we're, we are now, we're not allowed to be selfish because when we're married, we could still have our little outlets of selfishness or like, okay, well, this is me over here and that's you. But now we're forced, like we have to problem solve all these things like all day together and we're on this together. And so we're, we're raising these kids together. And so we're on the same, we need to be on the same page. And, um, these are big conversations to have about all these things you're leading. I'm, 
I'm having to follow your lead, even though like um, it can be difficult when I, I don't know. It's just, it really grows your relationship the, to a whole nother level. And it's just, yes. it's God given. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they're watching us. They're mimicking us. They're going to be like us. It's wild when like mm-hmm. you see them start to say the things you say and do the things you do. And you're like, oh no, <laughs> like. You, 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 you took on the wrong thing. Like you were supposed to take on the other thing. It's revealed. And yeah, it's, a, they are mirrors. They literally will just, they're a mirror, just like looking you in the face and you're like, oh wow, what have I done? So, you know, it's, it's, it, it is another tool and mechanism that God uses to bring us close to him, you know, reveal things about ourselves, help us to grow. And we get to lead these kids and have fun with them and try to be good examples for them. Um, some of the things that you know, I think we've already talked about them, but we we've been trying to um, we've been trying to implement, you know, to keep our relationship alive even while we have little kids. Katie's kind of already said those, but try to put the kids down early so we have time to talk at night. We try to get date nights when we can. We're almost in the stage where we can go away uh, mm-hmm. for a while, but even a one night we did the other, you know, um, a couple weeks ago was awesome. Just getting away for a little bit. Just kind of tr- always trying to find something to keep investing into our relationship because we notice if we get time, but like when we went away for that one day, it was it was kind of two days, one night. But it was like when we went away for the two days, we were even saying that we're like we really we we actually really like each other. Yeah. It's just that we're in the chaos of little yeah. kid season and all the things going on, all the stuff we got to do in the house and everything, and the church obviously, and and it's like there's just this cloud of stuff going on, stirring all the time. And it's like when the dust settles and we just look at each other and we start talking, we're like, we actually like each other. Yeah. We actually really like each other. There's just so much going on around us. And so that is enough. Um, the making those little deposits is enough to revitalize our relationship and to, and to keep us loving and serving our kids well, loving and serving each other well. Um, yeah. Ecclesiastes 3, she's giving to me. I want you to read this passage right here, the God-given task. The God-given task. Here we go. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 9. What gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end, I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. Yes. That's your, that's, that's the vision of life. It's wherever you're at, You just enjoy your work wherever you're working at. If you're single, you're working. If you're married, you're working. If you have kids, you're working. Just work and enjoy it. Enjoy life. Enjoy it now. Um, If you're single, enjoy it. If you're dating, enjoy it. If you're engaged, enjoy it. If you're married, enjoy it. If you're about to have kids, enjoy it. Uh, If you've got kids, enjoy that. If they're young, enjoy it. If they're old, enjoy it. If you've got grandkids or they're coming soon, if you're an empty nester, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. We've got to enjoy the life that God's given to us. He really has gifted us with an amazing life. We have a relationship with him, number one, and we have this gift of salvation that we get to give to each other. We get to love each other and serve each other. And life is, what is life, man? If you're not like enjoying it, you're not having a good time. And, uh, Really, you know, take a step back and make sure that you are, as you love God, as you love people, add the third command. I love it. Just get on enjoying life. Mm-hmm. Enjoy people. Enjoy today. Enjoy what God has given you. Um, that's that's the whole point of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he wants us to glorify him. In, in glorifying God, he's inviting us to enjoy him forever. And uh, that's why he created this playground, man, this earth, so that we would look at all of it we would experience all of it and we'd just be in awe of him and it would cause unbelievable explosive enjoyment in all of us. And, um, I love being reminded of that Mm -hmm. because, you know, putting your head down and just getting after it, you can miss a lot really fast. And so, um, 
you know, enjoy the details, enjoy all that God has given you. Mm -hmm. And know that God gives you all the resources and he will give you the, the, the heart and the spirit you need to create that family Today. and to create that marriage. It doesn't, nobody's marriage is so far broken. You can't fix it. That's right. Um, he can redeem all things and he wants people to enjoy life and, yes. and have a beautiful family and a beautiful marriage. That's, that's God's, he wants that. So, yes. um, receive it, receive it and do it and go for it. In Jesus name. <laughs> Love you, babe. Thanks for Love coming you. on the show. Thank you. And, uh, this was fun. Will you come on again? Maybe. You're my favorite guest ever. <laughs> Thank you. Love you, babe. Let's okay. go to some lunch. Okay. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the show today. Uh, we really appreciate you. And it would mean the world to us if you would like or subscribe and you would write an honest review for us. It's one of the fastest ways to get the word out for us and to share it with others. And so if you don't like uh, texting for a review, uh, you can always voice to text. That's a fast way to write one and really help us uh, rate the show and get it out to the world. Thank you so much for listening again. We hope it continues to bless you and encourage you each and every week. And of course, leave you stoked.